Hello, everybody! It's fanfix reading time! I, uh... I'm still in my drunken state from reading or watching Energon, and, uh... I am also tired, but I'm in that halfway tired state, but I'm not so tired state. You know, it's like you're awake, and you're energetic because you're awake, but you're also sleepy, and you're really relaxed because you're sleepy. So you're sleepy, and you're energetic, and you're smooth and relaxed, and you're all over the place. So it's like I'm liquid. Also, I'm still partially drunk. So I was laying down, and I was like, huh, I'm just not tired. Oh, I am tired, but I can't fall asleep. How am I supposed to fix this? And I was like, damn, I need to do something. I want to do something that was productive. So I was like, fuck, I'm going to read some fan fiction. And then I was like, oh, can't read Prisoner of War because secondary character's not here. And I can't read without her because she'd kill me. And I haven't even uploaded the newest chapter yet. I got so much shit to upload, it's not even funny. I got that, I got the Energon, and I got this. So I decided that uh, I was going to read something, and I remembered that someone had sent me a link to a fanfiction recently. Uh, and hold on, let me look up his name real quick. Mr. Smolensky Knife. Yes. And this is in fanfiction.net. It's called Friendship Never Fails. Also, I'm just saying this, I've never actually read it so far. Uh, it has five thumbs up and one thumb down, and it has five comments. Hold on. Ooh, this is good, me gusta. Uh, apparently Rarity's a bitch in this one. And Cliffhangers. Oh boy. Grady, Grady, McGrady, great. Uh, who is this by? Uh, Cyber PJ. Mandatory disclaimer, My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, is owned by its respective owners, such as Lauren Faust and Hasbro. Why did I call her Frost? She's not Mrs. Frost. I claim no ownership for any content like characters, locations, and all basic premises. This is strictly for parody use and therefore is no financial gain at all for me. This is just for entertainment value and is meant, actually meant to promote the show. You can download individually episodes from iTunes for $3 each. With that out of the way, I have a few notes for the read. You can download individual episodes from iTunes for $3. What? Is he talking about the legit like, episodes from the show? Because you could just go on YouTube. Note 1, this is not my first fanfic, so if it sucks, then you can't say that I'm a noob at it. It's just that I'm a bad writer. The story was thought out through several days and was organized throughout a written storyboard for maximum intrigue. There isn't any swearing, gore, or sexual content. Oh, wow. Well, we're just going to cancel this right here. Okay, no, we're not. A mother could read this to her kid as a bedtime story if she wanted to. This is not giving me encouragement. I try to stick with... Uh, this isn't to say it's a frilly girly story. I try to stick with the general MLP FIM theme of things and make this exciting for every pony. Mild violence in the later chapters. Fighting, because nobody knows what minor violence, mild violence means. If you have an imagination and can see clear pictures in your mind, this story will seem like a movie. 
not making me feel good about this, man. You're really throwing me off here. The story includes adventure, suspense, and some comedy. Really not. Oh, jeez. Description. When Twilight discovered there are elements of disharmony lying around somewhere in Equestria, she and her friends go out in search of obtaining them before they fall into the wrong hooves. However, the elements of disharmony are mischievous and cause the main six an extraordinary amount of trouble. All of Equestria is affected by disharmony, and now the six friends who represent harmony must save it before permanent chaos takes over. Without further ado, I present My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Friendship never fails. Wow. Really throwing me off here. I don't know if I honestly want to read this anymore. I'm just like, no gore, no sex, no swearing. I'm six. I need that stuff because I think it's manly. Oh, crap. Oh, man. <coughs> A long time ago, long before Ponyville, long before Catalot, long before Princess Celestia and Luna, long before the elements of harmony. Actually, this is how the elements of harmony materialized. The ponies of Equestria were joyful and continued on in their simplistic ways. No pony was ever harmed by one another, each and every one respected all. There were no fighting, no mishaps, and certainly no wars. Huh, you could say this high age was harmonic on its own. No special entities were needed, for everything was absolutely peaceful. However, one faithful night, the residents of Equestria were awakened by sounds they had never heard before. Screaming! Out in the darkness of the night was a tirade of chaos. Houses were being torn to shreds, and the towns were being devoured. Who could have caused this? The infamous pony clan who called themselves Pontact rolled through. A small group of outcasts who were banished from society due to their disobedience and stoicism. They were the brutes of Equestria and had no respect for others who with little care of what they did to any pony, but there wasn't any bad ponies, but these were here because they, yeah. The pony tact. What? Pony tact. What? Okay, so, uh, suddenly four warriors of light appeared with crystals in their hands. Oh, sorry. Suddenly Yu-Gi-Oh appeared. No. Uh, normally the pony tax could be chased back out of town, however this time was different. The unicorns could not use their magical abilities to trance them elsewhere, nor could the pegasi drop them out. For Earth's ponies, the pony tax seemed rather strong. Something was changed about them. Their normal eyes were a shade of red. They were Decepticons. And their bodies were a darker shade than once before. They were Decepticons. With resistance weakening, the most powerful unicorns were sought out to harness all their magical energy together. They were all lined up and shot their magic right into the six rebellious earth ponies. This slowed them down, but did not stop them. As soon as a pony tact was wounded, it would unleash another burst of chaos, and just like that, the wound is gone. However, the unicorns were just luring the pony tact clan to them. Eventually, the pony tact grew tiresome of getting attacked constantly. Well, they shouldn't have attacked a town then, and all lined up for a battle with the powerful unicorns. It was a standoff of racism. The pony tax group parted, half moved slightly left and half moved slightly right. A large unicorn pony walked in between them and up through the middle, slowly through the other unicorns. Each pony sat there in awe and just stared at the darker, larger unicorn of the pony tax clan. It smirked, flicked its wrist, but it doesn't have one and all of the powerful unicorns were flung at least 20 yards away. The rest of the clan walked up and stood before their unicorn ruler, but now the rest of the powerful unicorns stood and smirked themselves. The pony tax were confused. What did they have the, smoke, the smirk about? 
<clears throat> Just then, giant flashes of light were coming from five different corners surrounding the rebellious clan. They were frantically looking around, trying to understand what was going on and how they were being affected. They wanted to flee, but couldn't. Their legs were, wouldn't respond to the commands their brains were telling them. All of a sudden, one by one, each pony tech member was turned gray. They were rock solid and fell to the ground with a thud. With the pony tech clan turned to stone, the large unicorn leader even began to quiver. Slowly but surely, from the hooves up to the tip of its hone, the great unicorn also came down with an earth-shaking large thump. The flashes of light grew to one intense flash and died down. And this is how the pony attacks were defeated. Awesome. That's, uh, woohoo. Yeah. Pony tax. What the hell is the. Why would you name it the pony tax? The pony tax? Pony tax? How would you put it there? The pony tax. P O N Y T A C T apostrophe S. Pony tax? Pony tactics? Pony tax? I don't know how you're supposed to say that. <clears throat> the powerful equestrian unicorns came to the center of the earth where the clan was frozen and disarray spread. But what? They were in the center of the earth. Half of the unicorns were in charge of hiding the pontax deep inside their secret temples and never be awoken again, while the other half gathered the stone spears that were responsible for turning the clan into rock solid sculptures. These round rocks were placed in the highest chamber of the most guarded sanctuary in the town. They were dubbed the Elements of Harmony. For everything good, there is something bad to even out. The new stone sculptures of the Ponytack clan were dubbed the Elements of Disharmony. To this very day, the elements of disharmony were never retrieved, but if they were to fall into the wrong hooves, the consequences could be catastrophic. Twilight finished closing the book she just finished reading. She sat on the library floor, pondering to herself if she should believe a dusty old book with no credited author. Was any of this true, or was this just a big fairy tale? <clears throat> Twilight's questioning books? What? Twilight suddenly jumped up from a loud crashing sound that came from behind. She turned her head and saw a pile of books on the floor, with a small purple dragon emerging from the mess. Spike shook, from, shook his face, then looked at the books on the floor, and gave a cheeky grin as he noticed Twilight's uneasy look. I'm pretty sure... I mean, I know they're explaining or describing the situation or the areas, but if if you don't know the characters, then you really should not read the fanfics. You know, it's just like I, I'm not I'm not already bitching. I'm just saying I'll, I I read with a small purple dragon emerging from the mess, and I was like, are you really trying to explain to me what Spike looks like? I mean, come on. <clears throat> I don't have a Spike voice. Sorry about that, Twy. Spike said as he was picking up the books one at a time. I was trying to clean up those books you left lying around, and I sort of fell. I, I really don't know how to do this. I really don't. I can see that, responded by Twilight. Perhaps you can put them back on the shelves one by one. Perhaps you can read them by one by one. What was that? Nothing, Spike said while reshelving the books. What the hell? Hey, what's with that one? Hey, what's with that one? Why is the hey with an A? Is that my ponify? Hold on. Let's, let's, let's change that. Let's not make this. It's going to make me think of spelling errors because it changes all the food, all the words into pony words, even the ones that you wouldn't think of, like hay will turn into hay as in hay for horses. <clears throat> it's kind of funny, though. Spike held up a faded, purplish, leathery fin book. Y you mean this one? Uh, Spike read the title out loud for Twilight to hear. Medieval Equestrian History. He tilted the book to its side to see <laughs> its scarcity in pages. It's uh, pretty thin for a history book, he asked. 
The purple aurora engulfed the book and got ripped out of Spike's grasp as he fell over from the tugging motion. He groaned as he got up and dusted himself off. Wow. They, like, in a mood or something? Because they're both being kind of bitchy. Hmm. This looks exactly like the book I just read. Except condensed. She compared the two books and noticed that she was in fact right. Both books looked exactly the same, except one was much thinner. She scanned the pages of the smaller book and gasps. Hey, hey, what the... Did you wreck another book, Spike? She asked him calmly. No, I only touch books when I have to clean up. Spike replied while shelving the last few books in his arms. Twilight walked around the room into better sunlight and to, to see that she was in fact seeing something correctly. Well, something happened to it then, because there appears to be pages missing. She turned the book so Spike could see that there are indeed pages that look to be ripped out. Spike shrugged. I honestly don't know, Twy, he said, then turned to walk upstairs. I'm going to go take a nap now. Too many books. Ugh. Then flopped on his bed. Twilight just stood there dumbfounded. She scanned the pages of both books and noticed the book she read and the book with the pages ripped out ended in the exact same phrase. To this very day, the elements of disharmony were never retrieved, but if they were to fall into the wrong hooves, the consequences could be catastrophic. It's almost like the author wanted to hide something and rewrote the book. She just stood there thinking while staring bli blindly into space. She shook her head really fast and flopped the books to the ground and talked to herself quietly. Come on, Twilight. A few... But a book is missing a few pages. whoop de doo It's not like it's a mystery or anything, she said smiling and continued on her daily routine. Foreshadowing. It's not like it's a mystery or anything. <laughs> yeah. Oh, crap. Oh, come on, Applejack. I just wanted to help. Applebloom pleaded to her sister. Applejack just bucked a tree with a bushel of apples. Oh, bad memories. Right into the basket sitting nearby. I know you want to help, Applebloom, but all Big Mac and I are doing is bucking trees today. She responded. Well, is there anything I can do to help at all? Applebloom asked. What are you friends up to? Eh? Couldn't you be doing that crusade thing you always do? I meant, is there anything I can help do on the farm? She replied. Besides, the other two are busy today. Anyway, that's why I want to help. Applejack just shook her head. Sorry, sis, but until tomorrow, I'm afraid you're plumb out of luck. She bucked the tree again, getting the last few apples to drop. I, I feel so terrible doing their voices because, I mean, it's it's really southern, and I'm terrible with southern accents. And I don't even like southern accents. Apple Bloom turned back towards me. Oh, God. Oh, friendship is sexy is not a good story. Friendship is sexy is not a good story. <laughs> mantra. I need a mantra. Applejack is not a whore. 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 Oh, they're all horse. <clears throat> Apple Bloom turned towards Big Mac, who kicked the tree. Oh, God, not Big Mac. <laughs> Which caused all the apples to fall at once. Big Mac looked towards her little si his little sister and just shook his head. Nope. He picked up his buckets and walked towards the next tree. We'll be making apple cider and apple juice tomorrow, Apple Bloom. Applejack said. Then you'll be a mighty fine help. She winked at her sister and continued on to the next tree. Oh, God, no. <laughs> Why? Why are they doing this? Oh, yes. Blue Ribbon does the trick, does it not? Rarity said to her, stated to herself and floated shiny blue ribbons over a mini jupe. Mini jupe. Mini jupe? I don't understand what I'm saying. I'm drunk. She just designed. She walked backwards and, and turned to admire her handiwork. 
Now for some baby blue sapphires and everything will be perfect. Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? I've never done a, I've never done a, uh, Sweetie Belle voice. I never liked Sweetie Belle, really. Sweetie Belle was okay. That's it. Are you sure? I would think some yellow gems would go with it. A squeaky voice came from behind Rarity. Who is the owner of the boutique? Asked Rarity, not removing her gaze from her new dress. You are said Sweetie Belle, pawing the floor. Can I go to my friends? I'm so bored. Rarity spun around and turned, started to walk slowly towards the chest with sapphires. No, Sweetie, you asked if you could come over and help me, not come over to go see with your little silly clubhouse. Rarity said, Now come, I need you to hold the garment still while I place the sapphires on it. Rarity is actually wanting her sister to help her. What? The hell is going on? What? Why do you need me to hold it still? Does fabric move and when in proximity to tiny stones? Asked Sweetie rhetorically. Rarity just sighed and closed her eyes. Oh, all right, she said and held the dress with a lame look on her face. Oh no, I don't have enough supplies. Sapphires. Whatever. Rarity panicked while holding. Oh, sorry. That was that was Sweetie Belle talking. Ah, well, I'm not doing it again. Upside down with her magic and shaking it. She looked at Sweetie. You didn't have to make another art project, did you? Rarity sighed. Guess I'll have to find some more. But this dress isn't due for another week, so I'll just work on another project. Rarity, can I go now to my friends? Sweetie Belle, honestly, you said you wanted to help, so help you shall do. Oh god, not another fucking cutscene. Can we just get to the fucking plot line? Jesus fucking Christ. Clouds were just floating gingerly in the sky. That was until Rainbow Dash flew through them and punctured a hole in them. Man, what a day. She said as she descended and plopped onto an untouched cloud. You know what would top this day off? A nap. She slammed her head against the cloud and closed her eyes. I can't do Pinkie Pie either! <laughs> oh, God. <coughs> oh, jeez. Hey, Rainbow Dash! Rainbow's eyes opened immediately. She appeared over a cloud and saw Pinkie Pie. Oh, God, not Pinkie Pie. Uh. <laughs> she floated down toward the pink party pony with a smile and yawn. Hey, Pinky, what's up? I just want... Oh, sorry. I just wanted to know if you were up for some super-duper needle pranks. Pinky said, leaning forward towards her friend that she was standing on just her front hooves. Maybe some other time, Pinky, Rainbow said. I'm actually really tired right now. Us Pegasi had to get up really early for a scheduled rainstorm. Rainbow said, hiding a yawn. Pinky Pie looked... Puzzled for a second, then grinned okay. Again. I understand, Dashy. Your work's important. Pinky nodded up and down extremely quick. That's okay. I could just go to school. Pinky nodded again. Yeah, you do that, was all Rainbow Dash could contribute to the conversation, then flew back to her cloud. Pinky waved enthusiastically, then bounced off towards her helm while talking the entire way, going, <laughs> Rainbow landed on her soft, pillowy cloud and fell asleep almost instantaneous. What's with the rainstorm schedule anyway? She asked herself before falling into unconsciousness. She asked herself before falling into unconsciousness. Sleep and unconscious is two different things, isn't it? I swear it was. Oh, well, whatever. Um, oh, I can't do Fluttershy either. Everyone enjoying their supper? A soft, mellow voice asked. An abundance of creatures nodded their heads as they carefully chewed away at the food. That's good. Fluttershy smiled and went inside her fair cottage. She laid on the sofa and started eating some hay. They don't actually eat hay!
Angel bounced. Oh god, it's the pimp. Bounced up, then pointed to his bull while tapping his foot, giving a sour scowl. Angel caught Fluttershy's attention and she walked towards her animal friend, animal pimp. Uh, Fluttershy's eyes went into the sorrow mood and apologized. Oh, Angel, I'm so sorry. She got off the couch and trotted over the couch, uh, over to a counter. I can't believe I forgot. I never forget. She opened the cabinet and moved just in time to avoid a mug that fell and smashed on the floor, startling half the animals inside. Don't worry, everybody. It was just a cup that fell. The animals calmed down and continued grazing. As Fluttershy was going to get, getting out the food, Angel, for Angel, she couldn't help but look at the broken glass. She gave Angel his food and picked up the pieces. Fluttershy noted this was the mag that she had earned up in Cloudsdale. It had a picture of a cloud with a rainbow coming out of it and text saying, Junior Speedster's Flight Camp. How ever could I have been so careless? She asked herself. If I want, I could just go get another one. It's a good excuse to be able to talk to my old teacher. Oh, she would be so excited to see me. She grinned, then her ears drooped along with her smile, and cowered a bit. As long as Mr. Griffin isn't there, he yells too much. It was nearing night, and the sun was lowering below, behind the horizon. The orange glow bathed Ponyville with a picture-perfect sunset, and Luna's moon was slowly rising over the side. You know, she doesn't own the moon. You could, I mean, she was banished there. She never really owned it. You could just say the moon was slowly rising. I'm nitpicking. Twilight's treehouse was lit up and on the inside, and the unicorn was having supper with her assistant. <laughs> They're actually eating. Wow, that's new. So, Twy, I noticed a bunch of books lying on the floor again when I woke up from my nap. Spike said between bites while looking lamely at his, what he considered older sister I've seen things that said otherwise especially if Twilight mixes her hair up a little yeah I had nothing to do so I read some more said Twilight Spike just stared at Twilight with half open eyes then peered over to the scattered books bitch you think I'm cleaning this up not really Twilight noticed this and put her sandwich on her plate. Don't worry, Spike, I'll put those ones away myself, she reassured him. Reassured Yes. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. Yeah, you will. I can't see him saying yes, you will. It's like, yeah, you will. You better. What was that? Nothing, said Spike. Twilight just gave an odd expression that took another chunk out of her sandwich. What the fuck? Later that night, Twilight was reshelving the books and re she read and reread earlier. Anything to report to the princess? Spike asked while holding up a quill and parchment. Well, I didn't really see my friends today, so there's nothing really to report. Twilight responded. Also, it's not Tuesday. All right, was all Spike said and sat everything down and then walked back upstairs. You coming, Twy? It's getting late. He said while looking down. Wow, chicka, wow, wow. Insert porn music. Bow, chicka, wow. Bitch, get up here. Yeah, I'm coming, don't worry. The full moon was now hovering well above Equestria, emitting nice dim light. Twilight trotted up the stairs and slowly slipped into her bed. <clears throat> She leaned up and saw Spike was sound asleep and snoring like usual. She just rolled her eyes and fell backwards into her bed. Can we get over this? Come on, I'm done here. Twilight was standing at the edge of a cliff looking over a vast valley of forest and a river gliding through it. Her mane and tail were blowing in the wind as she stood there. She whipped around to see a cyan pegasus standing behind her awaiting orders. Windflow, I want you to circle the perimeter of our peaceful village. We can't have those pony tacks surprise us again. Windflow gave a salute and took to the sky. 
Now you, she pointed at a yellow pegasus. The pegasus pointed at herself with a confused look. Uh, Scutterfly. Really? Windflow wasn't completely obvious. I mean, yeah, it was. Flow and dash does include movement, but you didn't really see it that much as you saw Scutterfly. Do the same thing, however, remain on the opposite side of Windflow. Scutterfly nodded and uh, took off slower than usual. Uh, <laughs> this is starting to hurt me. Ooh, ooh, what about me? Bounced a happy looking pink earth pony. I want you in Battle Jack. Ow. Ow. Battle Jack to stay up here and keep a lookout. Got that? Twilight commanded. No problemo, Twilight. Twilight. Er. Yeah. Finally, scarcity. And I will remain on the ground in the village. She said, closing her eyes and walking past every pony. She opened them and turned to face the remainder of her team. With our magic, we can defend ourselves. So every pony understand, we must stand guard in case the pony attack, attack tonight. Pony attack, attack tonight. Oh my god. And if things get rough, when the show up, we will no longer try to sway them away. We will unleash our full power, <laughs> Twilight said. Let's go. She mentioned the scarcity, and they slowly walked down the mountain toward the village. <sighs> I realize we're doing this whole history ancestor thing, but really? Oh, the names. Oh, that hurts a lot. Oh, jeez. Well, if they do attack, they should make it snappy. I'm missing my beauty sleep. Scarcity replied. By the way, when you said unleash our full power, what did you mean? Um. Okay. I will just say this, as of this point, I am not impressed. They were all so talking about how, you know, in the past this was like the Golden Age, and then apparently we're having flashbacks, and they're all the original characters, they're just ancestors. Now, I'm sorry, I don't mind ancestors and flashbacks to like way, way back then, Ancestry, but when they're seriously the same character with a different name, that kind of does throw me off a little bit. And, uh, you know, and also, I mean, one of the reasons why I like the main six is because each and every one of them have flaws, and, you know, that sometimes causes problems. You know, they're not perfect characters, and I kind of got the impression that, you know, when this was happening, like this, this Ancestria thing, you know, Ancestria, <laughs> that's funny. You know, that everything was, you know, perfect, they were perfect people, they never had any problems, friendship wasn't necessarily required to fix problems because everyone got along anyway, it, you know, and you watch some of the episodes, and some of the episodes is about one, two of the people of the main six having an argument with each other because they can't get along, you know, and... And it kind of just throws me off. Of course, on the other hand, they said that everyone got along, and then there's this whole ponitics. Ponitics side, and then they're evil. Hmm. 
I'm not sure if I want to keep reading, honestly. I'm kind of thrown off already. I'm just like, eh, you know, whatever, eh. It might be good, but at the same time, I'm just like, eh. You're not hooking me in on this, you know. I'm not, like, intrigued, I guess. Kind of because they did that whole six thing where they, you know, showed off a little side scenario for each and every character. Which, you know, would it be so bad? But where the fuck were they going with some of those? Like, Fluttershy is mug breaking. What the fuck was with that? Makes no sense. Uh. Uh. Right. No, no. I I think we're done today. I don't know if I'm going to read this ever again. I probably won't. I don't like it. Uh no. M maybe that it gets better later on, but it's not hooking me from the start and that's not good. Good fan good good reading story in general should have, you know, uh, a hook, you know, a hook that draws you in and makes you want to keep reading. I'm 30 minutes into it, and I and we haven't even gotten to the main point of the story yet. It's just like, eh, meh, it's meh, you know. So um, yeah, and it's it's like five in the morning. I need to go to bed anyway. And I've already very much sobered up because of reading that. Ugh, my God. What was that? Like. Fapplejack? Fapplejack? Jackal hat? If it was, if it was bad, I, I would be pretty sad. Uh, Alright. <laughs> I'm Axelson. Good night, everyone.